Howdy guys, Life of Clay here and welcome back to my channel for another sculpting video tutorial. This time, I will be sculpting another known resident of Galapagos Islands, the brightly colored Sally Lightfoot Crab, Grapsus Grapsus. And if you like my sculpting videos, please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell icon right next to it, so you don't miss out any of our future videos. And also don't forget to like, share it with your friend, and leave your comment down below, and would love to hear your thoughts as well. And yes, without further ado, come bring the clay on and let's do a lightning leap. Let's begin by drawing a quick sketch of our Krabby model first, to break down all the parts and see the fine details of it properly. And we can now begin building the armature. I use 3mm aluminum wire as a handle, applying epoxy on its tip and cover with aluminum foil. Then form it into a flat ball, almost look like a lollipop. Secure with masking tape, set aside for a few minutes to let the epoxy cure. For the leg wires, I use 1mm SS wires, flattened and filing the tip to make them pointy. Bend and form them based on the crab segmented legs. And we can now begin sculpting its cephalothorax or its body. Cover it with a thin sheet of clay and shape it based on the reference. Adding all the details on its carapace and ventral and attaching its eyes. And while we're doing the sculpting, let's talk about our crabby friends and learn something about them. Crabs belong to subphylum crustaceans including lobster, shrimps, crayfish, prawns, krill, woodlice, and barnacles. And Grapsus grapsus is one of the most common crab found frequently along the coast of subtropical and tropical America, Africa, and Chile on the intertidal rocks. It is also known as the red rock crab but more commonly known as the Sally Lightfoot crab and got its name from its quick mobility and it belongs to the Grapsidae family. Its carapace is brightly red in coloration in adults and can range anywhere from 3 to 5 inches in width. They are predominantly feeds on algae using their spoon-shaped tip pincers but they are not also that picky about their food. They just graze on whatever the nature's available menu is served. This crab runs with extraordinary speed and agility along the upright sides of rocks and has the uncanny ability to hide away in crevices to escape predation. They are mainly solitary but can also be seen in large congregations competing for food and mates. And males can mate females by depositing sperm in the female's spermatisae while the female carries the eggs underneath their abdomen until the time they are ready to hatch. And now that the cephalothorax is done, I bury it in my fine Arabian sand and bake it. Now it's time to remove and pull out the aluminum wire. And I patch the hole with some pieces of clay, fix the details and cure the portion with heat gun. I wrap some yarn around the leg wires, adding cyanocrylate and sprinkle with Arabian sand. And we can now begin the sculpting. Cover them with a cut noodle of clay and start shaping them, adding all the fine details and segments. and then bake them. But I forgot to add the tip of each legs, so I added them after and just cured the portion with a heat gun.
I made the spines of its claws separately and cured them. We can now work on its claws. I apply two parts epoxy on the wire and cover them with foil. And form a small U-shaped copper wire and attach it to the claw armature. And wrapping around some yarn to secure. I cover the copper wires first with clay and form the basic shape of the pincers, then cure them. With this base, sculpting the claws will be easier. Then we can now begin sculpting the whole claw, adding all its details based on the reference. Adding those tiny bumps on it and add texture. I made a slit in the inner side of the claws and planted its spines. Brush them with alcohol to smooth out and cure them with heat gun. And we can now begin painting the crab. And in painting all the parts, I use bass yellow for the base color. And for the first layer of red color, I use a thin mix of bright red and bus yellow. Next is applying the more intense deep color of red paint. And now you can check out the subtitle guys to see the rest of the paint mix that I will be going to use. And if you wish to see the complete list, just check out the description box under this video.
and we can now assemble it. I use epoxy resin and two parts epoxy in attaching the limbs to its body. And to fill this gap between the legs and body connection, I use two parts epoxy putty and shape them. And then painted them to match the rest of the crab's color. And we can now seal the whole crab with the water-based polyurethane gloss varnish. In building the base, I use a round piece of wood, adhere some crumpled tin foil over it and cover with ADC, adding texture using various tools and let it dry. I use pure black for the base color and brush it with a wash of coffee brown and sap green. And painted the rim of the base with light blue. Brush and pour in the epoxy resin. And add the piece of severed octopus tentacle, which you can watch in a separate video tutorial I made. And there it is, our Sally Lightfoot Crab is finally done. I spent a long working hours in making this sculpture but during that period, I find it indeed enjoyable. And hope you did enjoy and find some of my techniques helpful and useful in building your projects as well. To see more sculpting videos in the future guys, please don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell icon right next to it so that you don't miss out any of our upcoming videos. Thank you very much for watching and may you have a great day everyone.